It's time for prophets to raise up and start speaking with more authority. Now, I want you to listen to this now. And if there's prophets watching me, and I'm sure there may be a few, and maybe some of you are and don't even know you are. Apostles watching, pastors, evangelists, teachers. Listen to this. It's time to begin to speak with prophetic authority even more. What do I mean? Elijah said, it will not rain until I say it will rain. Now, you know what? I don't know about you, but that, that right there is prophetic authority. He didn't stop to say, oh, I'm nothing. Oh, I'm just nothing. Elijah knew he was nothing without the Lord. But he didn't even check up. He said, it won't rain but by my word. Now, you think about that just a minute. He said it won't rain except I say it'll rain. This is the authority. This is what sets up Elisha's for honor. This kind of authority sets up Elisha's, those that will follow you, for honor. When Elisha left Gilgal, uh, Elijah left Gilgal headed toward the Jordan. Now, Elijah had received a revelation, and if we had time to get into it, uh, he had, what had happened, he had received the revelation that he was going to be caught away alive, and I believe he received it on the Mount of Transfiguration. Moses received a revelation that he would be a type of the dead in Christ will rise first, and they both appeared on the Mount of, of Transfiguration, and Jesus told them these things. And so when they went back to their own times, you know, Elijah never, he never parted water, never did anything like that until after he left the cleft of the rock, the same cleft Moses was in. So Elijah had received the revelation that he was going to be caught away. Now he left Gilgal, headed down to Bethel. Gilgal is the home of the prophets. This was where the prophets made their headquarters, Elijah and the sons of the prophets. But something had happened, and only one prophet was following Elijah now. His name was Elisha. And so Elijah gets ready to leave Gilgal, headed down to Bethel. Bethel means the house of God. So he's leaving Gilgal. He's headed down toward Bethel. And he knows he's going toward the Jordan to be caught away. And so he tells Elisha, he says, you stay here, and, uh, and I'm going to Bethel. And Elisha said, as the Lord lives and your soul lives, I will not leave you. So both of them headed down to Bethel. Now, the prophets, the prophets, Elijah told the generation to come, which was Elisha. Stay here, I'm going to Bethel. Elijah had told Elisha once before to go back. Remember when he first saw him, he first met him, he went by him, he was plowing in the field, plowing the 12th yoke of oxen. Remember that? He was plowing the last yoke of oxen. A friend of mine used to say that was a, there comes a time when Elisha had to stop his secular job and go into the ministry. He was on his last yoke. There is a time if you're called into that that you're going to plow that last yoke. And so Elijah comes by, takes his tallit, throws it on Elisha. And when he does, Elisha stops and says, Oh, oh, man of God, oh, let me go back and bury my mother and father. Let me see to them till they're not here any longer, and then I'll follow you. And you know what Elisha, Elijah answered him? He didn't say, Yes, Lord, have mercy. Go back and see to every detail. Keep plowing, keep doing. Elijah said, go do whatever you want to. What have I done to you? And he just started walking off. Elisha said, hold it, hold it, wait, wait. See, people want to go into full-time ministry, but they say, if the money's right, I'll go. If you can pay me my living, I'll stop what I'm doing and go. You need to hear what, you know what that's like saying to a stove, a wood stove? 
says, give me some heat, and then I'll give you some wood. It don't work that way. You have to put in the wood, then the heat comes. Then you have to keep it fed. And so Elijah told Elisha, you go on back and do whatever you want. What have I done to you? Elijah really didn't care right now. He just kept walking. Elisha said, oh, no, wait, 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 wait. I tell you, I want it. I want this. I want it big. I want it right now. He said, I tell you how bad I want it. I'll just kill these oxen right here, sacrifice them to the Lord, and I'll use the plow to burn them with. And that's what he did. And he, he left and followed Elijah. Remember one man asked Jesus that. said, let, let me go back and bury my mother and father. He said, let the dead bury their dead. Take up your cross and follow me. You've got to, in other words, trust me to take care of everything else. You just come on. And if you're going to come, you better hurry. Now watch this. So Elijah had told him once before to go back. But he didn't do it. And after everything, uh, Elisha said, I will not leave you. So Elijah goes to the house of God. But they didn't believe him that he was going to be called away. There was no honor there. Elijah goes to Jericho. There was no honor there. The prophets there. You know, the prophets said, this is a good place. The 50 prophets at Jericho said, this is a good place. You know, that's, that's really bad because the Lord said, whoever builds Jericho is cursed. And there was 50 prophets saying, this is a good place. No, it wasn't. It was a cursed place. But they were hollering it was good. There was no 50 prophets at the house of God. There was no honor in the house of God. You know what that is? That's prophets, that's people, that's attending church all the time, has no idea what a prophet is, and they've got their own conclusions of how a prophet should act. And when a real one walked by like Elijah, they mocked him. And they started telling Elisha, said, your master's going to get caught up. Did you know that the Lord's going to catch him up today and take him away from you? They didn't believe anything. It had become a bunch of seeker-friendly prophets. They just came in churches, and they didn't have any idea about prophets. And so Elijah left, and he said, I'm going to, Je to, to uh, Jericho. You stay here. Elisha said, I'm going with you. As the Lord lives, your soul lives. I'm going. He goes down with him to Jericho. The 50 prophets there said, don't you know your master is going to be taken away from you today? He said, yeah, I know it. You be quiet. You know, people shouldn't be talking about things they don't know anything about. And so he said, you be quiet. I know it. So he gets down to the Jericho, and here's the only. Now, remember now, there's prophets at Gilgal, 50 prophets at Bethel, 50 prophets at Jericho. There could be up to 150 prophets by this time. But only one was following Elijah. And he got down to Jericho, and watch what Elijah said. Remember governmental authority? Remember I said this? Elijah turns and looks at Elisha. And he says, watch, now watch. What will you have me do for you? He didn't say, what will you have the Lord do for you? Because in Elijah's mind, him and the Lord had come so close together that he was speaking for him. He was speaking for the Lord. And he said, what would you have me do for you before I'm taken? He said, I want a double portion of your spirit, of your consciousness. Whatever you know, I want double that. He said, you've asked a hard thing. So in order to get this, Elisha, the next part is on you. If you see me when I'm taken, you'll have it. If you believe it to the end and you see it all happen, and you see how it happens, it'll be granted to you. He saw it when he was caught up in that fiery chariot, and he was caught up away. And when he did, he looked up and said, My father, my father. And Elijah dropped his mantle to him. You're talking about somebody who spoke with authority. You're talking about somebody who said it won't rain unless I say it'll rain. And did you know the only reason, according to the Jews, that it even rained after that? 
was that according to the ancient teachings, they taught this, that the Lord kept trying to get Elijah to say, it'll rain now, it'll rain now, but Elijah wouldn't do it, and the brook dried up, and then he went on to the widow at Zarephath, and she fed him, and the only way, and according to them, the Lord was talking to Elijah, trying to get him to say it'll rain, because the Lord wanted to bring a, a refreshing back to the land, but Elijah wouldn't say it would rain, and God couldn't make make it rain until he said it would rain. Now, folks, oh, brother, oh, oh, that's so far out. No, it's beyond the relationships that the prophets have with God now. That's all. You have to speak with authority. If God spoke to you, say it. If he spoke to you, say it and don't take a step back on it. Hey, what if I have this detail wrong? What if I have this detail? What if you probably do? But the Lord will make it all happen because he needs someone to hold the wheel and hold it in its place. And because the Bible said the tongue sits on course, nature moving. And we're looking for, he's looking for prophets who will declare. Who is like Elijah who would say, it won't rain till I say it'll rain? And according to the Jews, the only, the only reason Elijah said at the end, meet me at Mount Carmel and so forth, was because the widow woman at Zarephath's son died. And when he died, Elijah, according to them, he, he raised him from the dead and then he said, that's it. Meet me on Mount Carmel, the drought will be broken. And when he got up there, when he said, ask the Lord to send the rain, the rain came. But not till then. Folks, this is prophetic authority. This is governmental prophetic authority. 